And the episode of Pups of Liberty you're about to see is based on the Declaration of Independence. However, in this version, all of the real people of history will be portrayed by cats and dogs. For example, you will see Spaniel Adams, a dog like me, representing Samuel Adams, who was a real living person like you. Then we have Paul Ruffier, who is based on Paul Revere. See how that works? Well. They do say people look like their dogs. After the Boston Tea Party, King George III instituted new rules that were intended to make the colonists give up their fight for independence. This only made them want their freedom more. They called together a convention of delegates from each of the 13 colonies and met in Philadelphia. This Continental Congress focused on one very important decision, whether or not to declare independence from England. The colonies would become a free nation, but that would mean they have to go to war with England, which is Catland in our story. Well, that's the end of our lesson. I hope you enjoy the Pups of Liberty, the Dog Floration of Independence. After the Boston T-Bone Party, the Royal Tomcat wanted the dogs to pay for what they did. He ordered that the following laws be taken into effect. The Port of Boston will be closed. Any doghouse may be taken over and used by Red Cat soldiers. All disobedient dogs will be sent to Catland to stand trial. There are to be no more canine gatherings. And finally, there is to be no freedom of the press. In Philadelphia, the dogs formed a Continental Congress to govern themselves. The Pups of Liberty in Boston were sending dogs to represent them. For Anne's safety, John sent her with them so she could be apprenticed to Benjamin Franklin. Meanwhile, the Red Cats were on their way to seize powder and guns from the Minute Mutts in Concord. They knew Anne and the delegates were on that road. Orders were to arrest them all before they reached Congress in Philadelphia. The pups had eyes and ears everywhere and sent Paul Raffier to warn everyone that the Red Cats were coming. Red cats are coming out! The 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 red cats are coming out! They want to arrest you! The, the Minute Mutts will try and stall them, but you must go now! Thank you, Rafir. We are in your debt. The red cats are coming out! How could the Red Cats do this? How could they hurt us? We can't do much here, Anne. But if we can get to Congress, we can help. There's no going back now. Here we are, Anne. Give Mr. Franklin my regards. See you in Congress. Mr. Franklin? Do you like it? It's off the new press. A prototype, really. You must be my new apprentice. How is your father holding up in Boston? He's well enough, but he can't print or report or do anything. And he seems so far away. He was smart to send you here. He said you're a good printer hound. Do you want to report as well? Fetch the news? Yes, sir. Good, good. As I like to say, it is the working dog who is the happy dog. I can hardly wait. 
When can we start? It so happens I'm on my way to Congress. I'm a Pennsylvania delegate, so you'll have an inside source. Ow! My tail! So, if you're a delegate, does that mean you get to vote for whatever you want? Oh, <laughs> if only my job could be that easy. You see, Anne, being a delegate means I represent the views of all the dogs in my colony. I have to report back to my pack every time there's a vote in Congress to ensure I make the decisions they want. Here's your friends, the Boston delegates, Spaniel Adams and his cousin Pug. He's one tough terrier. The Virginians, Thomas Jeffer Hound and George Woffington. This meeting is called to order. Sit. Delegates, today we discuss whether to declare our independence from Catlin. Does any dog here object to independence? I object. John Doxon, you have the floor. John Doxon? But he wrote letters from a farm dog, the penman of the revolution. Indeed, a great writer on freedom. But times have changed. My fellow pups, we must make peaceful resolve with Catland. To this day, I consider myself a citizen of Catland, even though it is my desire to have a government of dogs here in the colonies. <laughs> The cats will never tolerate that. How do you know if you don't give them a chance? We have given them enough chances. The red cats attacked our dogs and have made Boston unbearable to live in. It's true. I'm from there. They would rather let us suffer than have freedom. Uh, forgive me, Mr. Hamhock, but I do not believe this pup is a delegate. You haven't been in Boston. This is real. The cats are not giving up. Soon things will get worse for all of the colonies. <clears throat> the fact remains that we need to be cautious in our actions. I do not support independence, for I fear the consequences of splitting from Catlin. I present to you, delegates, the catnip proposal to try for peace one more time. It should be sent to the royal tomcat right away. And he will send it straight to his litter box right away. <laughs> The motion before this Congress is to send the catnip proposal to the Royal Tomcat. All of those in favor? Aye! Then it is settled. We send the proposal at once and wait for a reply. Mr. Franklin, why did you vote yes for the catnip proposal if you don't agree with it? Well, Anne, sometimes keeping your head and solving problems from a different approach is the best way to get what you want. I don't understand. When the Royal Tomcat says no, it will prove to every dog just how unreasonable he really is and will show them the truth. No dog will heal to that. The pen is mightier than the sword and knowledge is power. Let's go inform the pack of today's events. See that, Anne? That's Thomas Jefferhound. He's a rare breed and a good dog to have on our side. We should pay him a visit. <laughs> That's what I was saying to George Del Mason. Good evening, friends. May we join you? Well, oh, evening, Benjamin, of course. So, you've told the pack of the catnip proposal? What's the news, then? Love a bit of catnip myself. Um, uh... What's the matter, Anne? Cat got your tongue? <laughs> May I present Mr. Thomas Fang? Nice to meet you. The world doesn't think the way it used to. There are so many new ideas, like all creatures are created equal. Yes, and as such, they should be able to self-govern. Which means no king. No dog should have to be under a cat's rule. It's silly. Don't you feel like you're going against your own kind? Well, Anne, it might seem like that. But I see it differently. I believe that freedom is the right of every creature, whether born in Catlin or in the Americanine colonies. Cats do not have the right to control anyone. We are all created equal, which means the royal tomcat is born the same as any dog. There should be no king at all. Every dog should know this. It's canine sense. Uh, I'm from 
Boston with Dr. Warren's mutts. I've come to ask Congress for reinforcements. The Red Cats are trying new things every day. We're holding them in Boston for now. But if they get out, we're finished. They refuse to leave, and they have the city locked up tight. Have you seen my father, John Kennel? Yes, I know him. He's the printer hound, right? I, I saw him a while back, but, but I can't lie to you, pup. It's a bad place to be. Urgent message, sir, from Catland. A proclamation by the Royal Tomcat in response to the catnip proposal. <clears throat> All dogs are to remain subjects of the Royal Tomcat. Any dog who is disobedient will be considered a traitor and put to sleep. Oh no, Papa. We must declare independence. Th this is too much. I would rather live under the Royal Tomcat than see my fellow pups be put to sleep. There will be no life under the Tomcat's rule. Certainly not a life of freedom. You'll be on a leash, muzzled. You heard it for yourselves, delegates. Please, discuss this with your pack. We will reconvene to vote on independence. But we cannot part from Catland. There has to be reconciliation. There, there, there has to be. Why can't you see? The cats will never let us be free. Papa's trapped in Boston. I have to do something to help him. If we wait too long, he'll surely be taken prisoner and tried as a traitor. Congress has to vote for independence. How can I unite the pack? If only there was something that could convince them, show them the truth. Tom Fang! His canine sense! It could unite the pack and convince even John Doxon to vote for independence. Mr. Fang! We have to print your ideas on freedom and equality. Your canine sense! Hurry! Nothing would please me more! Canine sense was read by all the dogs of the 13 colonies, and it changed the way they thought about equality. They let their delegates know that they agreed with what it said. With support for independence growing and the vote coming soon, Congress chose a group to write the final statement of Americanine independence from Catland. The Declaration of Independence was delivered to Congress for the final vote. All of the delegates were present, except for John Doxon. As you are well aware, voting yes will sever ties with Catland and declare us independent, but also at war. Let's begin. New Hampshire. New Hampshire votes yes. Rhode Island. Rhode Island votes yes. Massachusetts. Massachusetts votes yes. New York. New York abstains. Connecticut. Connecticut votes yes. New Jersey. Yes. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania votes yes. Delaware. Yes. Virginia. Virginia votes yes. Maryland. Yes. North Carolina. North Carolina votes yes. South Carolina. Yes. Georgia. Georgia votes yes. 12-4. None against. With one abstention. Independence passes! Boston! They can't stop us now! Liberty! Liberty and justice! Good day, Miss Kennel. I'm sure that you are happy with the vote. I am, but why weren't you there? Anne, I do not believe in resolving conflict through violence. Yet I cannot stand in the way of independence either, if that's what the pack wants. I believe in the democratic process. I am devoted to the rule of law and the principles of liberty, but I also respect that dogs can have many different opinions, whether I agree or not. I hope that you learn to serve your country with respect for every creature. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all creatures are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, 
and the pursuit of happiness. Back in Boston, General George Woofington convinced the Red Cats to leave. Fire! But the Revolutionary War had just begun. And... Papa, you're here! Welcome back, John Kennel. Oh, Papa, you should have seen it. Congress passed the Declaration of Independence, and now we're at war with Catland. But what's next? Now we fight. We fight to stay free, as every creature was meant to be. There's no turning back now. As Patrick Henry says, Give me liberty or give me dog breath. A rich lady lived over the sea, and she was an island queen. Her daughter lived off in the new country, with an ocean of water between. Oh, with an ocean of water between. His pockets were filled with gold, yet never contented was she. So she ordered her daughter to pay her a tax of three pence a pound on the tea. Oh, three pence a pound on the tea. 